Hello everyone and welcome to the 68th community demo uh, and today we have a lot of agenda. So before going to the agenda, I would like to brief you guys with, uh, with a conference that we are going to come up with, which is the OS camp. Uh, last year and before a lot of years, we've been doing conferences, being present at uh, FOSDEM and Config Management Camp. Looking at the present and the interest of folks in Foreman, Foreman project, we decided to have uh, an own OS camp, a one day event where, wherein we will have only Foreman uh, specific topics. To just brief you with some, uh, we have Aditi who will be presenting about Azure. We have Bernard from ATX who will be talking about uh, Foreman and Salt integration. Then we will have uh, Dirk who will be speaking about uh, plugins in Foreman. There's Martin who will speak about uh, CLI tools with Foreman. There's Andre who will speak about uh, automation with Ansible, uh, or integration with Ansible and Foreman. And lastly, we have Sebastian who will be speaking about uh, managing heterogeneous environment. That sounds like a quite uh, a good lineup for talks. Uh, you guys can, you folks can buy your tickets uh, for OS Camp uh, at uh, oscamp.de tickets. And that's about the event. Let's move ahead with the topics today. So in the agenda, we have uh, report formats by Merrick. Then we have Foreman template, uh, templates UI by Andre, followed by template description file and default template inputs by uh, Oleg. So um, let's move ahead and uh, without wasting any time, I would like to give it over to Merrick. So report formats by Merrick. Right, I'm gonna share my screen. That. Uh, so I'll start with a bit more context. So today I'm gonna to talk about report templates. If you haven't heard about that before. Report templates is a way how to uh, create the reports uh, of data that are present in Foreman. Uh, so you can find it under monitor report templates. And I'm gonna create a quickly one new uh, report template here. Uh, so to demonstrate how it works and how it worked until now. Uh, so basically, you write an ERB here and you use uh, macros that are available in uh, safe mode uh, or in our rendering context. So you can use the Ruby syntax like this. Uh, basically, you say load hosts each record to host. And then you can Basically, whatever is in between these two lines, this is like a for each cycle, uh, is rendered uh, like a separate record. So, for example, if I want to create easy CSV report of a host name and a host IP address, I could do something like this. Uh, e. oh, here I need to have an equal sign, and just for a slightly better formatting, I should do some indentation here. Uh, now, if I click preview, I would see uh, it should create a list of all hosts and IP addresses. And there are some small nits, like in this case, I need to use the minus sign here so that it doesn't print out the, the new line after every line it generates. So this is a quick way how to create a CSV report, right? Now, let me quickly start this as a new template called quick report. And if I go and try to generate this, uh, the preview was limited to the 10 records only, but if I generate the full report of that, I should get a list of, I don't know, 1,000 hosts. I have. That is my text editor, and you can see I got uh, the report for all the hosts. Now, what is important on this, you can notice that the file extension is .text, and the MIME type for that file was actually a plain text. If you were paying attention, uh, there is one new thing here, which is output formatting here, right? This is a disabled field, uh, which uh, I can't change for this particular report because I can't tell what the format uh, of the template is. That's because it's just an arbitrary code I put together. Um, I could, instead of comma here, I could use whatever else syntax. I could generate the JSON here, like I could do curl bracket here. And uh, for every record, this would be an object and specify name, uh, host name, and things like that, you know. 
So we can't tell based on based on uh, this code what the format of of this report is. But uh, if you use uh, report template macros, uh, it actually allows you to select the format. So how that would change, or how how it would uh, be different if I use the report uh, report template macros is for every record I'm going to put into my report, I use the report row here and just specify the column name and then the value like this. And I can specify the second one like this, e host IP. So you can see this, this is a Ruby function. I can also put brackets here so it's more clear. So this is a, a method report row. Um, and then I specify the name of the column and its value. And this will basically prepare the data for uh, for every host record. Now, the second trick is I need to, at the end, uh, create a report based on the data I prepared here. So this report row basically just put it into the memory like a new data. And then to generate the report, I need to call this report uh, uh, render macro. If I now click preview, you will notice that it's basically the same report, but the change here is uh, these two macros. If I use these two macros and I go back to the rendering form, this quick report, we can see that the output format is now enabled and I can choose one of the four formats. So CSV, as we've already seen, that's the default format that we use in the preview. But from now on, I can choose uh, one of these four formats. So we have support for JSON, YAML, and HTML. So let's look at the HTML. That's an easy one. So if I generate HTML file, first of all, you can notice that uh, the file that is being generated has the proper uh, file extension, and the MIME type is also set to the, to the HTML file. And if I look at the HTML that we generated, it's very simple style, but it's basically the same data in the table uh, with some easy formatting. Now the question may arise, like, can I, can I change or customize the CSS? Not at this point, but it's not hard to add some setting where you could put a custom uh, CSS to change how the report looks like. Um, if we go back to the, to this, uh, CSV, CSV format, I click submit, obviously it will generate the CSV. Uh, again, the, the main change here for the CSV is, uh, the, File extension is CSV, so when you click on that, it will try to open in a uh, spreadsheet uh, tool like Polygra or uh, OpenOffice Cop or something like that. There are two more reports, which are usually useful if you want to parse that data from the report in some external uh, script or application. So you can export it as a JSON or as a YAML. So let's look at the YAML. That's going to be probably more interesting. Um, so. This is a format that you can easily parse uh, from a Ruby script or a PHP script or whatever you prefer. Uh, you'll just load it and you usually get it in form of a hash or something. Um, all right, the good news is all the reports that we ship by default use this new macro, or they are not, news, not new, but they use these macros. So all of these templates that we ship can already uh, take benefit of this and you can choose the format that you are interested in. So even the statuses of the host can be rendered, for example, as an HTML report. Just to demonstrate that. This report and open the page. Now you can see you have the HTML format of something that you previously only had as a CSV. Uh, one more trick I wanted to show. So let's see, uh, let's, let me try to uh, play with this template. Uh, if I click on preview, the preview mode uh, always defaults to the CSV. That's the default format. And it also limits, by the way, the, the number of the data here. So you don't overwhelm your server, your server only with uh, when, when you're testing the report. So it's limited to 10 records if you load this load host macro. But one nice trick here, if you want to play with uh, the format that uh, that you are interested in, you can pass the argument like that, format JSON, and then uh, you get basically the output in the, in the desired format. So you could use also HTML, I guess, and get how it would look like HTML.
All right, and I think that's all I wanted to show. That's really awesome. I guess uh, it's, this this is very helpful. Uh, I remember last year when I went to uh, quite conferences, people used to ask me about uh, report templates and and I think this this solves a lot of problems. So thanks, this would actually solve a uh, lot of folks' uh, issues. This is great. So next up, uh, we have Foment Templates UI by Andre Prasad. Over to you, Andre. Okay. Let me just share my screen. Uh, so, Formal Templates is a plugin that allows you to import or export templates uh, either from a GitHub uh, repo or from a file system. And previously, this plugin didn't have any UI, only hammer commands and API endpoints were available. Uh, but now we um, finally decided to. UI, so uh, I'm on the host and sync templates. Uh, and you can see this uh, form uh, that allows you to uh, choose whether you want to import or export your templates. There are different options for uh, each of these, uh, and uh, they actually come from the settings. Uh, so you can, you can uh, change these in the settings, and then you uh, have these defaults. Uh, so let's say I will be importing uh, templates from my file system. I will filter, uh, use filter, uh, but uh, yeah. Also, if uh, you have these buttons here, so if you decide you want to use the default value, you can reset uh, you can reset the field. So let's import templates. Uh, please note that uh, the actual import uh, action uh, doesn't run in the background. So um, Foreman will respond once uh, all the templates are imported. And here we have the results. As you can see, uh, some templates are green. So uh, there were no errors if we Take a look at the details, so that's great. Now, here is a red one. Uh, this one has a problem. There is missing name in the metadata. This one has no model in the metadata, so these were not imported. And down here, we have a warning. Uh, this one was also not imported, but this is expected because we use the filter. And here, we have a reason because uh, it was just put it out. Okay, um, please note that uh, these results are um, only on the client side. We don't keep uh, um, the records of, of the um, import or uh, export result. Uh, it's pretty much the same as uh, if you were doing this uh, via Hammer and then got uh, the results printed out to the console. If I refresh the page, uh, this will be this will be gone. We just import the templates and don't store the actual results of the, the import. You can also uh, export the templates. So this time uh, I will be doing export into the Git repo. Uh, please note you need to have your SSH key set up prior to doing uh, export, which I already have. Uh, so I'll just um put here uh the path to my repo uh, again i will filter because i don't want all all my templates exported and uh, let's uh do export yeah this takes a little bit more time And now we have our results. Uh, as you can see, everything is green. And when I go to the actual repo, um, you can see that there is a, a that I pushed into the into the branch. Uh, 
quite recently, and if I take a look at the changes, yeah, uh, there are uh, there is a uh, commit that was made today. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, great. Thanks, Andre, for that informative uh, uh, view. And next up, we have uh, template description fields and default template inputs by Ole. So over to you, Ole. Okay, uh, let me show my screen. Is it visible? Okay, maybe just increase it. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> nothing special, but introducing a new field in all kind of uh, templates, and it's called uh, description. So every template, uh, whether it's a report template or job template, contains now description field right here. You can use it as you want, but I think it's good for, I don't know, mentioning some useful stuff or like I just here uh, I've got here a report template called Ansible inventory and it's better to not rename it because it's uh, it is used by uh, from an Ansible plugin to uh, to generate report template and it uh, find finds it by name, so uh, I just uh, wrote down um, some note in description field that uh, this template has a special name and should not be renamed, but uh, it's not locked and you can use it for your purposes. Uh, also, <clears throat> uh, the data for description uh, could be sent via API or with hammer as well and to show how it looks in hammer let's just run template oh that command sorry yeah that one so here is it description field um i think that's all about this and I'm continue with a um, new feature called the default value for template inputs. Okay, well, let's continue with this template, but it works for just yeah. One one important mention that um, default values for template inputs uh, work only for user inputs. So let's just okay. Here's a template input called hosts, which allows you to search or to limit hosts which you want to be in your report. We just specify value type search, host, and default value for that. Um, this is useful if you're doing uh, a lot of the same work as a user and you don't want to uh, put values by hands all the time and you just want to uh, have pre-configured uh, template inputs. So here's default value. Okay. Uh, I've got a lot of template inputs which are pre-configured already. As you may see, uh, there is a value type plane for user input which uh, contains options like yes or no and default value yes or no for some template inputs. Uh, how it, does it look uh, when you want to generate the board? Uh, so now you see that all the templates, uh, template inputs are pre-configured as you wanted to. So some of them uh, has uh, some of them have values like yes or no as you 
as you configure it. Uh, also, there is a search that I wanted to be. And let's generate a report to see if it works. And yes, it works. But uh, because of my search, uh, there, there are no hosts. So let's just generate another one with changed uh, value. Or just with, without any filter. And here is it. Mm -hmm. That's not what I wanted. One second. Anyway. <laughs> Yay. Now oh, there. Oops. Um, what else? Yeah, it works just only for user inputs, uh, whether it's plain input or date input or search input. Uh, sorry. I think that's that's it. Okay, I would have time for you. Okay, go ahead. So first of all, uh, thanks for uh, for both features are actually pretty useful. The first one, uh, description field. Uh, do you know if I can search templates based on this field? For example, if I put my own notes there, can I search easily templates that I marked somehow? Currently, we don't support it, but it's not a problem to add it. It's uh, just small fix. OK, that's good. And the second thing that was interesting was uh, you showed us the report template Ansible inventory. Can you explain what is that? Why is that? Uh, how is that useful? Or uh, what is what this report actually generates? It generates Ansible report, <laughs> as you uh, may see it by its name. It uh, it used uh, in Ansible uh, or in Ansible Tower um, to fetch uh, hosts, and it's uh, reconfigured, reconfigured, or I don't know how. To uh, say values, it because it uh, it uses uh, uh, report engine, uh, it goes much faster than it uh, does now because we do a lot of uh, API calls for each host, for each of host, uh, and that's and it's slow. So yeah, but this template allows you to run fewer calls, actually just one call, and then uh, you just ping a server for the report, which is generated on the ground, and yeah. OK, so this replaces the Ansible inventory, or also the Tower inventory script, basically, or? The, yep. OK, and, and the main benefit is the performance? Yeah. OK, very good. Awesome. Do you know which version of Foreman uh, we can expect this improvement in? 124. Very good. OK, thank you. And uh, I would also have a similar question to Ondra, actually. Uh, the, the Foreman Templates UI is awesome addition, I think. It's, it's really nice to see. Uh, do you know, or what, what is the version of Foreman that, that I can start using this? Uh, it should be in 124. Awesome. Thank you. Great. Uh, that was uh, a great demo. Thanks, uh, Marek, Andre, and Ole for uh, wonderful presentations. Uh, see you guys in the next demo uh, uh, after three weeks. So, yeah. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Rahul. Bye-bye. Um,